Excuse me, what do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The interesting thing about the positive and the negative are that we're learning through biochemical exploration and engineering. There are enzymes in the brain that release different endorphins into your brain as a result of the way that you think. A person who thinks a positive thought is not just saying, oh goody, I'm just thinking positive thoughts. They are affecting the chemistry of their body. And when you look at things like schizophrenia and some of the least understood of the mental illnesses, we say, yes, there's chemical imbalances there. And the scientists all get together and say, yeah, it's chemistry. What are you talking about all this thinking stuff? If we can alter the chemistry, we can alter the disease. Of course it's true. I buy it 100%, but it's only 50% of the battle. What causes the chemistry to change in a human being? What causes an ulcer? Isn't that a chemical change brought about as a result of thinking? Isn't that what it is? Well, the same thing is true of a mental illness. Yes, the chemistry is different, but believe that you control your chemistry. It's your chemistry. You carry it around. It's yours. And every patient who I've ever worked with in the really severely disturbed realm still must understand that they're doing this to themselves. Yes, your chemistry is unbalanced, but don't believe that we're just going to put you on lithium, or we're just going to put you on this drug, and the drug is going to, for the rest of your life, do it. You've got to believe that you can, in fact, alter any chemistry within you through the way that you think. What do you think blood pressure going up when you're under pressure is about? It's a chemical change brought about through thought. What do you think hypnosis is? I mean, we use it in medical practice all the time. Dentists use it all the time. You put yourself into a different state. There's no chemistry. There's no drugs. You're not getting any anesthesia. You're putting your brain into what is called an alpha state. And in that state that you change through thought, through thought, which is everything. Remember, it's what you are. Thought is what you are. Thought is also what your husband is and what your children are. It's just your perceptions of them. That's all you get. You can't get to the process of what that human being is. You can only get to one level removed from the process and accept them for what they are in the process that they are. And when you put yourself into this state in a dentist chair, they can drill all day. They can do uh, root canals. And you can think of just anything that you want to. And my dentist told me, Sid Weber, who used to be my dentist when I was living up here, told me that when he was undergoing training to learn this hypnotism, someone told him that he would give a post-hypnotic suggestion that his wedding ring was very hot and that he wouldn't be able to stand the heat of it so that when that suggestion was given, his mind would go into this other state and he would have to take it off because it would be very uncomfortable. And he went through this thing and then he mentioned the word, the hypnotic suggestion, and his fingers started getting very hot and he couldn't get the ring off because it was swollen. And, he was, and finally, after a lot of struggle, he got it off and there was like a third degree burn around his finger. And this is a guy right here in town who's a practicing dentist. And the stories of the kinds of things that you can do through thought are not some magic boogaboo kind of thing. The man in India that we're talking about who has an ashram in southern India, he's supposedly the highest spiritual being on our planet. He's this peaceful, beautiful human being who can make ashes. Like come out of the end. He's pulling dust out of the air through his belief in it. And everybody's going, ooh, how do you do that? I gotta get you on the Merv Griffin show. For him it's just as easy as it is for you to get up and brush your teeth in the morning. It's because of the pureness of that thinking system. I can control my thoughts. Store that away. My feelings come from my thoughts. My emotions, my angers, my hatreds, my love, my positive emotions, my negative emotions are all preceded by thoughts. They're the result of thoughts. They're the physiological reactions to thoughts. And emotions, which are very vital and very important to each one of us, can in fact be controlled by our thoughts in positive ways. I'm not an anti-emotion person. I'm not someone who believes that you shouldn't be emotional. I'm saying your emotions should never be immobilizing. They should never be defended as something that you use to keep yourself from being all that you can be or explaining it all away because 
I'm just this kind of person. I've always been this way. I can't help it. That's my nature. That's the kind of person I am. You are the kind of person you have chosen to be as a result of how you use what you are, the pureness of your thought. It's all that you are. Your form is leaving. It's changing. In that little tiny drop of protoplasm that once was you, everything was programmed in you. Every hair that you have and every one that fell out. <laughs> It was in that little drop of protoplasm, all right? That little tiny drop of protoplasm changes and changes and, and everything that you need to be all that your form needs to house this soul that you are and these thoughts that you are wears out and changes and dies. But thoughts never die. Thoughts never die. That's what it means to be transformed. You've gone beyond your form. And everyone who has ever died, every form that has ever been in your life who has ever died, None of the thoughts that they are could possibly have died. How do you kill a thought? It's the highest form of vibration in the universe. How can you kill it? It's there. Be in tune with it. And you know, we would have a lot less trouble with death if we began to understand that death is just merely a form of transformation. It's all it is. It's a beautiful form. Imagine how necessary it is. Imagine what our planet would be like without it. It'd be very crowded. <laughs> And yet, there's room for thoughts forever in an unlimited universe. You can't run out of space because you don't need any space for thoughts, do you? And that's what you are. Before you came here in that little tiny drop, there was no space <laughs> for you. You didn't occupy any space, yet your essence was there. And it will always be there. And it's nothing.